the Washington Treaty laid out two main restrictions on capital ship replacement, besides the familiar tonnage and armament limits. From 1922, there would be no capital ships built for 10 years, and after that, no capital ship less than 15 years old could be replaced. A couple of exceptions were made for Italy and France, which had considerably older navies, but for the big three navies, these limits applied. In anticipation of 1932, the Japanese Navy began work in 1929 on designs to replace the oldest of their active capital ships, the Congo class, the oldest of which would be 19 years old by the time a new ship could be laid down. The ships would still need to comply with the 35,000 ton displacement and 16 inch maximum gun size limits. After considering a number of possibilities, including ships at 20, 25, 30, and 35,000 tons, which would allow for the construction of different numbers of replacements, somewhere between three and six ships, depending on the individual displacements, the basic design section under Captain Fujimoto submitted a 35,000 ton design but would find itself in competition with his predecessor, Admiral Hiraga, who decided to just submit his own ideas, because why not? With the current state of research and document availability, less is known about Fujimoto's idea. It displaced 35,000 tonnes, with a 73,000 shaft horsepower power plant, granting a design speed of just under 26 knots its main distinctive features being a relatively compact amidship superstructure centred on an externally trunked funnel and a massive tower superstructure. Armament would consist of nine 16-inch guns in three triple turrets, a pair super firing forward and one aft, with the aft turret partially elevated in a manner similar to that which the Italian Littorio class would adopt later. But the most unusual feature was the secondary battery, Made up of a dozen six-inch guns in six twin turrets, it was initially planned to mount four of these right aft and another pair well forward of the main guns. In the final version, this was slightly changed, with a pair of turrets still right forward mounted side by side. Two were moved amidships, one on each side of the superstructure, and two remaining right aft on the centre line in a super-firing pair. Aircraft would be mounted on a flying-off platform on the aft main turret. Nothing is known about the proposed armour layout, although one cringes to think of what must have been a relatively lightly protected set of six-inch magazines positioned at the narrow ends of the ship. Hiraga's plan is better known thanks to the survival of a lot more of his documentation. This ship was also 35,000 tonnes, of course, but used 80,000 shaft horsepower to reach just over 26 knots. The main armour belt was to be inclined and 14 to 15 inches thick, depending on location, with a turtle back deck above, which was just under 12 inches thick on the slopes and about 8.5 inches thick on the flat. This impressive level of protection was to be accomplished by making the citadel as short and narrow as physically possible. Indeed, at 321 foot long, the citadel was even shorter than that of the Nelson class, and this was accomplished mainly by widening the machinery spaces to essentially the edge of the hull plating to reduce their length, as well as bringing the citadel well inside adjacent to the turrets instead of letting it continue in line with the hull, which saved massively on the weight of deck armour, even if it made the top-down layout a little bit octagonal. This did attract some criticism, as it would theoretically allow the ship to be sunk by gunfire that just didn't have to penetrate the citadel as it contained far less reserve buoyancy than was needed to keep the ship afloat, which was a key part of most battleship designs from HMS Warrior onwards. The main battery was to consist of 10 16-inch guns mounted in super-firing pairs fore and aft, in each case with a triple super-firing over a twin, similar to the Pensacola-class cruisers of the US Navy. The secondary battery would be 16 6-inch guns in a hybrid layout, Eight guns would be in casements, and the other eight would be in four twin turrets mounted in super-firing pairs either side of the amidship superstructure. The secondary turrets were supposed to be dual-purpose with a maximum elevation angle of 75 degrees. The superstructure itself was the most striking feature. Like Fujimoto's, it was very tall, but this time the funnel was to be heavily raked back with a rather neat S-curve flourish to it, whilst the main superstructure tower started in a pyramid shape similar to later US fast battleships, but then sloped forward for the bridge before cutting back, 
and then having the top half slope even more heavily forward again. Four underwater torpedo tubes completed the weapons loadout. Aircraft handling facilities were included atop the two super-firing triple turrets. Although both designs were considered against each other for a brief time, Japan's signing of the first London Naval Treaty, which came with an extension of the capital shipbuilding holiday, meant that there was no need for these plans in the immediate future, and by the time the second London Naval Treaty came up for negotiation, the Japanese Navy had moved on to planning for what would become the Yamato class. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have a comment or suggestion for a ship to review, let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to comment on the pinned post for dry dock questions.